Hello there, I'm Shane Young, and I get the privilege of helping you learn Copilot Studio. But before we start, I did want to let you know that I worked with the Microsoft product team to create this awesome training for all of you Power Platform rock stars. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's get to it. To get started, here we are at the homepage of Copilot Studio, and the first thing we're going to do is click Create and then we'll choose new agent. Last time we used this process, we walked through and had the interactive conversation with a large language model in order to help us kind of lay the foundation. This time I want to show you how to do it if you don't want to do it by a chat. So we'll go up here and we'll click on skip to configure. Okay, so now we're going to play fill in the blanks. So first let's give this a name like incident report triage custom agent. Like, could I be more wordy? Oh well. Change our icon, change our icon again, and we'll use this fun little icon that I made. We'll hit save. Remember it needs to be less than 30K. But one of the reasons I keep pushing you guys to add your own icons here is because it just becomes really overwhelming when they're all just look the same when you're going in there, right? Very quickly, you're going to have lots of different agents for little things. You have demo agents, test agents, production agents. And so I want to make sure that you just kind of get in that habit of always just real quick, let's make the icon now instead of later, right? Big air quotes again. Um, so it just kind of keeps us going. Okay, for description, let's go ahead and do something like this. An autonomous agent that processes new incident reports after they are entered into Dataverse. The goal is to determine the severity and status of the incident based on all the details. Yeah, something like that. Right, we want the agent to have an idea of what it does, why it's doing it. So we're going to give it something to that effect. Now down here in instructions, what we're going to do is we're going to write instructions, but we're not going to, like, we don't have all the details yet. But basically, this is kind of like my plan for what my autonomous agent is going to do. The first thing we want to do is get some information, right? So we're going to get the information from the parent and child tables. Then we need to get the description of the photo from the child table. Then we need to save that back to Dataverse. Then we're going to evaluate the incident using our Word document that's already created. And then we need to send an email. And then we're going to update the parent record. So that's our plan. That's what we want our agent to do. There's more instructions that need to go in there. But I feel like by kind of laying out, like, here's the pathway we're going to go down, it makes it, you know, less blank screen when we get over there on what we need to do. Now, we don't have any starter prompts because no one's going to talk to this thing directly anyway, so we don't need any starter prompts. And for knowledge, we're not ready to go there yet. We'll wait and do that once we get into the process. You know, I think step four up there where we decide we need to get knowledge, then we'll worry about adding that. So this kind of paints a picture of what we want. So up here in the top right, we're going to click on create. And now it's going to set up our agent. And this is going to take, you know, anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. And one of my pieces of advice is even though you can start to mess with things right now, I generally don't go forward until this edit button lights up because then I know that the agent is fully provisioned and I'm not, you know, doing anything that might step on anything's toes. So I'm just going to step away and have a drink for a second. I'll be back in 30. I didn't even have time for a drink. As soon as I said I was going to step away, it finished. So very quick. So now that we are here, We've kind of got our first piece going. We could continue to edit and refine, which we're going to do plenty of here. But really the last thing we want to do here is to make sure we turn on orchestration. So this is use Genitive AI to determine how to best respond to users and events. And we want to enable this. This is what's going to let the agent think for itself. The large language model is going to come in to play and do all the things we want. And after we enable that, the change has been saved. If you go up here to the right and click on settings, Here's kind of that same information. We don't need to do any of that again, but generative AI on the left. So here you can see that by toggling on the other screen, this changed the mode from classic to generative. And then it set the moderation always to high, more precise. So this is kind of where you're telling the agent how much control, how much external thought it can have, how much you know spice it should add into your recipe. And so in a high, more precise, this is saying, hey, I want you to kind of just go with what I've said, which is generally what you're looking for, especially in business scenarios like the one we're about to do. OK, we have image input. Um, users aren't going to interact with the agent directly, so we won't want to turn this on because, well, they can't because they would never use it. So let's not have anything running that's not necessary. And then down here, you can see I've got this enhanced search results enabled. This is because I have an M365 Copilot license in my tenant. And so then this allows us to use that semantic search of SharePoint. And so this is enabled by default, and we're definitely going to want this because we're going to end up storing our Word document in a SharePoint site, so this would help get back better results. So everything looks good here. We didn't really change anything, but just thought I'd cover it real quick. So we can hit X. All right, and that gets this one configured. I will see you over in the next video where we'll add the trigger.